guys start talking? Test. As we test one, two, test one, two. Just to get you caught up now, we are in the top of the third inning. The Port Elgin Blue Devils lead this one, one nothing. They got their runs in the top of the second. A leadoff walk to Brian Mace came around on a double by Greg Tatey. Tatey was gunned out at third trying to stretch that double to a triple. As we sit right now, a 1-2-3 bottom of the second for Scott Smith. As Brian Latra is on the hill now. And we are in the top of the third. Lance Wynn, Blair Setford, Joe Todd. Glad to have you with us here for the championship final. Strikeout. Game Strikeout. 103. Adam Hill. And the pitch now to Brian Lance. The third baseman is low and away. Count now is one ball, one strike, and Lathrop misses low. Experience some, experiencing some technical difficulties that we're working through. And that pitch is fouled straight back up and out of play. We'll run the count now to two balls and two strikes. A beautiful afternoon here at the ballpark. It's evening now. The best weather of the week. And that pitch is slapped down the right field line. That's a fair ball. It's going to find its way into the corner. Rounding second on his way to third base. And in safely with a triple is Brian Lands. Just what the doctor ordered. A leadoff triple for the Port Elgin Blue Devils as they look to add to their one-run lead here in the top of the third inning. That'll take us back up to the top of the shop for Daryl McKinnon, the second baseman. He singled in the first. McKinnon has been on fire all day, as have most of the players on the, Blue, on the Port Elgin Blue Devils. A little bit of an equipment adjustment. We've got sun and shade as the long shadows are slowly creeping across the infield. Brian Lathrop now set to deal and the pitch is way upstairs. Brian lands 60 feet away with the Blue Devils second run. Daryl McKinnon at the plate. The 1-0 pitch now is in there for a called strike. That's going to even the count at 1-1. One one. The infield straight away in a step. And the pitch now is hit hard to the shortstop. Checks the runner third and over to first base for the out. A good play from Dan Mitchell as he holds the runner at third and records the out. That'll bring up the shortstop, Ryan Dungeon. He popped out to the third baseman in his first at bat. With a chance here with one away to add to the Blue Devils lead. So there seems to be all of a sudden now we're 103 games in and there appears to be some question marks about the pronunciation of certain names and that includes Tady as well as Lathrop and of course now I'm getting Dungeon. So I tell you what, we will go with Dungeon 
because the customer or the listener is always right. So Ryan Dungeon, the count is one and one. And this one is hit hard, but way up in the sky, settling under it now is a center fielder and a gun home. No play as Lands remains at third base. And Bob Gillow with a good arm out there. Got the ball in to make sure that the Blue Devils didn't add to that one nothing lead. In steps Aaron Whitney now, the big center fielder. Covers a lot of ground and has been hitting the ball a ton all week. He grounded out in his first at bat. And the pitch, a good drop ball outside. It's fouled away. A good pitch from Lathrop. Lathrop has certainly put in quite a few innings today, as has Scott Smith. They have been the workhorses for their respective teams. The pitch now misses low. You can only imagine it's a, just a matter of time before both of the starters run out of gas. The 2-1 pitch now is called strike. Whitney doesn't like it. That'll move the count now to one ball and two strikes. Very boisterous and full house here is... Whitney reaches out to play to shortstop over to first base to record the out and prevent the run from scoring. A good play from Dan Mitchell as he took the one hopper, short hopped it, and gunned it over to first to end the inning and the threat. So in the third inning, no runs off one hit, one runner left, stranded on third base as we mosey on over to the bottom of the third inning. The score, the Port Elgin Blue Devils won. The Kitchener-Waterloo Cubs, no score. And I'd like to send a shout-out to some fastball players in the Ontario region. Ricky John, of course, listening in. Enjoying the telecast. Tracy Woolridge. Also listening. Along with a number of current and former fastball players. As we head now into the bottom of the third inning, it'll be Lyndon Grovem or Groovem. Chad Wells and back to the top of the shop in Dan Mitchell so Groven will step in his first at bat here in the championship game of the TOC holds the bat high left handed batter and that pitch is inside Count one ball and no strikes. We are in the home half of the third. And a swing and a miss on a rise ball from Smith. Grovem had a good cut. But that ball just kept right on rising. The pitch now to Grovem is fouled back. That'll push the count now to one ball and two strikes. Lance Wynn, Blair Setford, Joe Todd, glad to have you with us here as we wrap up the 2009 Tournament of Champions from the Campbell Complex in Rock Island, Illinois. And the rise ball misses upstairs. We've got ourselves an all-Ontario final with the Port Elgin Blue Devils taking on the Kitchener-Waterloo Cubs. 
Lance starting to get some shadows across the infield here as we are at about uh, 719, 720 local time here in Rock Island, Illinois. And uh, the sun has played havoc with some outfielders earlier in the day. We saw a couple balls drop in that normally would have been caught. Don't expect that's going to be too much of a problem now, perhaps only in right field. Absolutely. And I think uh, as I look out and scan the outfielders, the pitch missing low, I see Aaron Whitney sporting sunglasses as well as Mike Riley out in right field. A good idea, I'm sure, based on where the sun is on the diamond, and it's just to the right side near the third baseline, and this one is popped up and out of play. As Grovem continues to battle here, at least a seven pitch at bat right now. The count is two balls, two strikes. And the rise ball misses, and I stand corrected. It was three balls, and down the first base goes Groven with a leadoff walk. That'll bring up the designated player, Chad Wells. Scott Smith still on the hill for the Port Elgin Blue Devils. Chad Wells lays down a beauty bunt, fielded by the third baseman, Brian Lance, and over to first for the out. But in the process, Grova moves over to second base on the sack. So with one out, we'll head back up to the top of the shop, and Dan Mitchell, who struck out looking in his first at bat, Mitchell's been playing a solid shortstop all week. Fatigue certainly has to be a bit of a factor here. Both these two teams are 3 0 today and a big swing and a miss as Mitchell fails to connect on the rise ball. One away here, runner on second base. Leadoff man Dan Mitchell. The 0 1 pitch is hit back up the middle. Nice diving play at two bag by Daryl McKinnon. Saved a run right there, Lance. Full extension, Daryl McKinnon keeping that ball on the infield. No opportunity for Lyndon Grovem, as fast as he is, to score from there. So give Mitchell an infield hit, but a great job by McKinnon to save a run. That ball destined for center field. About a three hopper that rolled up there and a great diving play from Daryl McKinnon. As we say, say goodbye, goodbye to, to Chad Stock Honaker, Stock Pack. Honaker. Pleasure having them and working with him. I'm sure they'll be back in full force next time around. As Bob Gillo now steps in he singled in the first went over to second and then to third both on wild pitches now runners on the corners here and a big cut from Gillo is fouled back chance here for Gillo to tie this game a one out hit here We'll bring in Lance. My apologies. Bring in Grovem. Scott Smith bouncing on the left side of the rubber. And the pitch. And this pitch is popped up. Going back is Ryan Dungeon to make the play. And a chance squandered, and Gillo certainly not happy with himself as he flies out to the shortstop. 
And that will bring up Grant Beckler. Flied out to right in the first inning. The chance here to even this game up. Lance Grant Beckler having a whale of a tournament hitting in the 4-500 range for the KW Cubs, one of their leading batters. I want to say goodbye to Jeff Van Hooser. Safe travels to you. We'll see you somewhere soon on a ball diamond somewhere. Take care, guys, all the stock pack guys. Jimmy Saffel, stock pack coach. Safe job, travels, guys. my friend. Excellent job again. Hey, bud. Thank you. Missing upstairs to Grant Beckler. One ball and no strikes. Runners on the corners here. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Two away, and this one has popped up. Calling for it is Daryl McKinnon and squeezing it. And that'll be all she wrote for the Cubs here in the third as an opportunity squandered as they leave two men on board after one hit. So after three complete as we mosey on over to the fourth inning it's the Port Elgin Blue Devils won the Kitchener Waterloo Cubs no score so tit for tat last inning it was Brian Lance that led things off with a triple and the Blue Devils could not bring him in the Cubs return the favor as Grovem gets a leadoff walk and moves over to third base. They get runners on the corners, but can't cash in that tying run. Looking ahead here in the fourth, it'll be Mike Riley, Brian Mays, and Greg Tady, the left fielder. Well, Lance, uh, if you're a KW fan, you have to think that the Cubs have them right where they want them. They've come from behind in their last couple of games. They were trailing Palermo last night. They were trailing Water Down this afternoon. They were trailing Stock Pack this afternoon. And yet, here they are, this KW Cubs team all but given up for dead after their first two games as they dropped both decisions and, quite frankly, looked poor in dropping both of those games, roaring back to life, winning both of their remaining round robin games and even in that last round robin game against uh, A1 Root Pack trailing late in that game and it took a two run bomb by Grant Beckler in the top of the seventh inning to put them into the lead to uh, to start them on this roll that they're on so coming from behind appears to be a trend for these Cubs as the off speed pitch to Riley has popped up and going back is Dan Mitchell but giving way to Lyndon Grovem the right, the left fielder. So one out here in the top of the fourth inning. That'll bring up Brian Mays, the first baseman, who walked and scored the only run of this ball game so far. Now lands the entire infield in shadow here, all but the back of the dirt, and left field pretty much in shadow as well. As Lathrop starts Mays off with a called strike on the outside corner. The 0 1 pitch is in there again for a called strike. No balls and two strikes. Ryan Lathrop certainly logging a lot of time and trying to work that outside corner. He misses low. I think he's probably going to lead the tournament in innings pitched. I don't see how he can't. Brad Thompson pitched one of the playoff games against the Waterdown Hammer earlier today. And uh, I think Topper pitched one of the round robin games, if I'm not mistaken. But other than that, Lathrop has been logging all of these innings. A workhorse to say the least. The count now is one ball and two strikes to Brian Mays. And the Lathrop pitch is over the plate but low. That'll even the count now to two balls and two strikes. Lathrop. And the changeup is popped up and out of play down the right field line. 
We want to thank you for joining us here on Ballpark Radio. Lance Wynn, Blair Setford, Joe Todd, and of course Jim Flanagan always in the house. The 2-2 pitch now is grounded to short. Scooped up nicely by Mitchell and over to first for the out. Two away now. And in steps Greg Tady, the left fielder. So Tady, who lined a shot that went all the way to the wall and left center, on his horse, tried to stretch a double into a triple and was gunned down at third base. Fortunate enough to score Brian Mays prior to that. And that's the only run of this ball game up to this point. And the pitch low to Tatey. You know, for two guys who are out of gas, Lathrop and Smith doing a pretty good job keeping these uh, bats from both of these teams off the bases so far. The 2-0 pitch is inside and misses again. That'll up the count now to three balls and no strikes. Tatey looking to get on base. Possibly start a two-out rally. This ball is lined to the third baseman. And thankfully, Adam Hiller, doing a good job of being in a defensive position, had the glove ready because that was a bullet to end the inning. So at the halfway point here, it's the Port Elgin Blue Devils leading the Kitchener-Waterloo Cubs. one to nothing the score. As we move along now to the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Brad Thompson, Adam Hiller, and Travis Hofstetter. And Lance, if there's any advantage here at all between these two teams who are very evenly matched, I would say the only one would be that Scott Smith has been here twice before with the Harrison Mercuries. Smith winning... The titles in 2003 and 2004, as I said, uh, the top pitcher both of those years, the MVP in one of them as well. So if you're going to rely on a guy to get you there, you might as well rely on a guy who's done it before and done it with success. Now, having said that, Ryan Lathrop, all kinds of success on his own. He was the MVP at the AA Major Tournament two weeks ago in Bay City, Michigan, what was supposed to be a uh, full weekend tournament turned into a single elimination one day affair, but Lathrop pitching the majority of the innings for his team, and they won the title too. So lots of championship experience all the way around. Well, certainly, and the first pitch is fine, but a great effort by the second baseman, Daryl McKinnon, as he goes face first into the outfield. Ball dropped, and give the leadoff man, Brad Thompson, a single, single on that. Just an absolutely phenomenal effort. I thought that ball was just going to settle nicely in the grass, and out of nowhere, Daryl McKinnon flying through the air, about four feet in the air, full body extension, and just had a tip off the end of his glove. This guy's been everywhere all afternoon, and uh, a big sing or big home run rather to help Port Elgin propel them past Decatur to get here. And we want to welcome our listeners back on Ballpark Radio. We apologize for the technical difficulties, but we are back. We are in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 1-0 in favor of the Port Elgin Blue Devils over the Kitchener-Waterloo Cubs. Adam Hiller at the plate now. And missing upstairs is Scott Smith. The count is two balls and no strikes. A runner on first base after a single by Brad Thompson. Both these pitches have logged plenty of innings today and missing outside is Scott Smith. Hiller was a tournament all-star last year in Lance for the KW Cubs. They steamrolled the opposition in their round-robin play, but then ran into Brian Newton in their first playoff game and fell ultimately 3-2 in nine innings. The 3-0 pitch is in there for a strike. Now three balls and one strike, one away, sorry, no one away, man.
man on first. And that pitch is in there on the inside corner. That'll run the count for three balls and two strikes. Lance Wynn, Blair Setford, Joe Todd, and Jim Flanagan. Glad to bring you game 103 here in the 2009 Tournament of Champions. And Lance pitching for the Cubs in that game, none other than the guy who's on the mound now for Fort Elgin, Scott Smith. So very familiar with this team and this lineup is Scott Smith. 3-2 pitch now is fouled back and we'll do it again. Just in case you missed it, both teams squandered opportunities early. It was Port Elgin in the second inning that got a leadoff walk and then a double laced to the gap by Greg Tate, who's gunned down at third, trying to extend it. This one's tipped back to Scott Smith, over to second, and a great job of taking out the defensive player it was Big Brad Thompson. No throw there for Ryan Dungeon. Ryan Dungeon was looking for a bit of an interference call. That's just a good hard slide by Thompson going into second base. It's uh, taking out the legs of Dungeon, kind of one, two, three hopping the throw over to first. And they weren't going to get Hiller in any event, I don't think. So the Corso at second. Regular that will leave there. Hiller on first. Fielder's choice. And that will bring up Travis Hofstetter, the right fielder. As he looks at a called strike one. Hofstetter patrolling right field. Slow gets to the backstop, scooting over to second and taking a big turn. It's Adam Hiller on the wild pitch from Scott Smith. You know, and these are the little things that can come back to haunt you. He's up there without having to bunt him over or steal or anything like that, and now a single quite likely scores Adam Hiller. And the rise ball continues to rise and misses. One ball and one strike. We are in the bottom of the fourth inning. And time is called. Scott Smith wanted to reset. That turf pot also. And we're ready to go again. sure why they've elected to not use Steve Ketchell or Rob Fawcett, two weapons that are at the Blue Devil's disposal, but they're in the final and it's awfully hard to argue. If something's not broken, don't fix it, and that ball is snuck in there just a little low. Well, Lance, you know what? I think until the KW Cubs show that they're going to start to hit Scott Smith, this is going to be his game. Here's to have been the plan from the first game this morning. And a big swing and a miss. And certainly nothing bad to say about Scott Smith, who's done a fabulous job. He's carried his team on his shoulders. Two out now, and Ed Burkholder steps in. He grounded out to third in his first at bat. Pitch is inside and tight. One ball. A full house here. Everyone packed around for this championship game. And a swing and a miss. Ball that went low. A hard drop. Count now even at one ball and one strike. Two balls and a strike. As the entire diamond now is almost 
covered in shade as the sun has gone down below the tree line. And Lance, the breeze that we had most of the day has totally disappeared too. Flags out in right field just hanging limp on that flagpole, so nothing to speak of in that department. All external factors appear to have been eliminated, so there's no sun, there's no wind. Perfect fastball weather. And the pitch, this one is driven to center. Going back, 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 and at the fence is Aaron Whitney. Aaron Whitney. Great job to get back to the spot where that ball was going to land and squeeze the glove on it as that ends the inning. No runs off, one hit, one runner left on the base. And as we go to the top of the fifth inning now, the Blue Devils continue to lead 1-0 here. Get it out of Looking ahead now to the top of the fifth, it'll be Troy Barbara, Matt Turcotte, and Brian Lance for the Blue Devils as they will look to add to their lead. And certainly hats off to these pitchers who have gone the majority of the innings, not only in today's playoff rounds, but over the course of any play as well. Here before me. Here's the, all the brass from the ISC are parked in their VIP spots. Enjoying this TLC final. Not quite sure what the odds in Vegas were of these two teams meeting. Well, Lance, the three and the five seeds, it's not like these guys are the 22 and the 28 seeds here. Uh, certainly well respected. This is a rematch not only of the 2005 final, but it's also a rematch of the Intercap Qualifier final. The Cubs winning that one one nothing as Ryan French threw every single game for the Cubs that weekend. Ryan, unfortunately, unable to join us this weekend due to an illness uh, in his family. Big swing and a miss here. Good bar foot now. Count even at one ball and one strike. We are moving along here. We're in the top of the fifth inning. And that pitch is grounded to the shortstop. Mitchell and gunned over to first base for the out. And just like that, one down. And Mitchell's got a really good arm. That was a great throw from Dan Mitchell. Of course, we have spoke about the infield here and all these diamonds being very well. They're dirt infield with gravel mixed in for drainage purposes, obviously. But it's the majority dirt, so the hops are true. That allows infielders to maybe sit back just a bit. And that's what Mitchell's done, displaying that strong arm of his. Matt Turcotte now will. This one is lined and through and past the diving Mitchell for a base hit. Turcotte also been hitting the ball well over the course of today's action. And he gets on base. So a base runner now for the third baseman, Brian Lance. He tripled in his last at bat and was stranded. That was the squandered opportunity I alluded to earlier. And the bun attempt is fouled back. So there's a man on, one away. We're in the top of the fifth inning. One nothing, neighbor of the Blue Devils. Good idea there by Brian Lance to drop the bunt down. Got the bat out late. I think took KW a little bit by surprise for just fouling it off at the plate. So Lance steps back in now and the pitch is bunted back to the pitcher and double clutch over to first base for the out. Matt Turcotte will move up six feet deep. Brian Lance is sack on that. Well, Lathrop had to wait for Burkholder to get over to first. He picked that ball up in a hop, and I thought maybe he had a shot at getting Turcotte out at second base. Turcotte's a big guy. He runs well for a catcher, but he's still a catcher. But Lathrop was going to first all the way. 
And I think that's exactly it. He never actually took a peek at second base. Had he made up his mind earlier, fielded it as cleanly as he did, and just gunned it over there, I'm sure he would have got the force. Back up to the top of the shop with Darryl McKinnon as he takes a called strike one. He singled in the first and grounded the short in the third. McKinnon has played outstanding defense throughout this tournament. That ball is hit through the hole on the left side and rounding the base, third base. Here comes Mark Turcotte and he scores. A big RBI single for Darryl McKinnon as he cashes a run and boy Blair, those two out rallies hurt. Well, it's the turning the tables on the Cubs in their quarterfinal with the Waterdale Hammer. The Cubs scored seven times with two outs in the sixth inning, I think it was, the seventh. Bottom of the sixth? Bottom of the seventh. Well, it couldn't have been bottom of the seventh. They won ten by top of seven. Top of seven. So that'll bring up Brian Dungeon. Dungeon. And that one's up the middle through the wickets. And scooting over to third base easily is Daryl McKinnon. And Ryan Dungeon doing a good job there. If you ask Ryan Laidrop, he'll certainly uh, be upset he didn't pose the wickets better. Yeah, it looked like he just tried to squeeze it shut on that one. It skipped through his uh, legs underneath his glove and dribbled out to center field. And on his horse all the way was McKinnon, and that kid has got some wheels. So there continues two away now, and that'll bring it to center fielder Aaron Whitney. Not the guy you want to see. A lot of RBIs this tournament. And a player to center. And that ball's going to drop in there for a single. There's another one. As in comes McKinnon. Devils third run. They now lead three nothing. And over to third base enters Ryan Dungeon. I think that that is Aaron Whitney's 13th RBI for the tournament. I'm just going to look in the book to see what the tournament record is. Off the top of my head, I know it's Jay Herb, but I think off the top of my head he had 14 or 15 RBIs back in 2007. Either way, Whitney's done the job, and that'll bring up Mike Riley. Looks at it, called ball outside. Not quite sure if there are any horses in the pen to relieve the ground. As runners on the corner now with two away. Missing outside again. Well, the 13 is going to put him in third place behind Jay Herr, who had 16, and last year Marcus Tan with 14. Definitely producing for the Blue Devils this week. And a big cut from Riley, who certainly, his eyes must have just lit up when he saw that pitch. Just missed it, fouled it straight back. Now two balls and a strike. Runners on the corners, two out, and the changeup is fouled. Lance, uh, worth noting, both of these teams will have an automatic berth into the ISC World Tournament next year in Midland. For those who are asking, the Midland website address, it's a great website, it's midland2010isc.com. Make sure you log on to that. Two pitch misses and makes an indifference as Whitney strolls easily down the second base. Count is full now. Three balls and two strikes to Mike Riley. Struck out and flied out in the fourth. And this one is lined to center field. That's going to bring in one more for sure. The throw is not in time as Whitney scores and it scoots away. So down the second base goes Riley. Give him an RBI single. Two RBIs on the play. And now 5 nothing for the Blue Devils. Well, Lance, 
points. If our listeners remember back to 2005, it was the Port Elgin Blue Devils who were on the short end of an 8-1 to one run rule shortened game. That one won by the Cubs, of course, in the final. And now the Port Elgin Blue Devils threatening, at least, to uh, run away with this one. And that's going to be it for Brian Lathrop. We're going to see Brad Thompson go in and get the pitching glove on. And Brad Thompson will try and close the door here on this hard-hitting Port Elgin lineup. Brian Lathrop, I'll be interested to see how many innings he's pitched here this week. I've got to guess that he's going to be well up into the 40-plus innings, maybe even over 50. And I don't care who you are in a four-and-a-half-day tournament, 50-plus innings, especially given the way that uh, it's been staggered, it is not going to be easy on the arm and on the body. Today, due to the rain that we've had, we had a rain delay on Wednesday, another rain delay yesterday, you're going to need to have won four games to win this tournament. And to ask anybody to pitch uh, three, essentially almost four, back to back to back to back like that is just too much to handle, especially given the wear and tear previously in the tournament. Absolutely. And, uh, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword sometimes, you feel. Well, you can get away with really with two workhorse pitchers, but at the same time, if you get a rain delay similar to uh, what happened during this week, and one minute you're planning for two games on the championship Saturday, and instead now you have to play four. Yeah, it's a big difference. There's no doubt about it. And uh, we certainly wanted to do everything we could to make sure that every team got every opportunity to contend for this championship. We had Plan B, Plan C, Plan D, and Plan E if they ever got that far. But I'm uh, absolutely ecstatic here that we got to play the full 103 games and make sure that this was decided on the field and by all of the teams that are here. As we resume play now, it's Brad Thompson on the hill. Chad Wells who moves over to first base. Uh, he looks at a first pitch ball. Brian Mays now. Another duck on the pond. Down at second base is Mike Riley. Congrats, Thompson's not yeah, exactly uh, fresh either. Well, he's been he hard seven innings against the Watermelon Hammer about two and a half hours ago. Get another one. Thompson <laughs> wheels now and a swing and a miss by Mays. Out now one ball, two strikes. California. Entering twilight time now. They do have the lights on here. Tough to see with the eyes adjusted. Mays this one to Frankie. Settling under that and Travis Hofstetter, and that will be Good it another in the fifth inning. But what a fifth inning it was for the Port Elgin Blue Devils as they come away with four runs on five hits, the one runner on. And Just seen Brian Lathrop run out of gas. Is Scott Smith the next, or is he going to be re-energized by this uprising by the Port Elgin Blue Devils? It's a lot different pitching in a five-run game than in a one-run game. Maybe you don't have to be so fine, but at the same time, for Scott Smith, you don't want to start putting runners aboard to this Cubs lineup. We've seen what they can do. Ten runs against Waterdown. Ten runs against... Nine against Stockpack and ten the one before that. So they put 29 runs on the board earlier today, and for this KW Tubbs team, always dangerous at the plate. So we'll here wait. Is. Safe travels on your way home from the Waterdown Hammer. All the best. We'll see you at the GHFL. So as we head now to the home half of the fifth inning, it'll be Linda and Roman. 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 Followed by Chad Wells and back up to the top and Dan Mitchell. Grovum earned a walk in his first and only at bat. That was in the third inning. And this one has popped up and out of play. No balls, one strike. 
right. And Blair, if you are the pitcher of Waterloo Cubs, you had a long day in the diamond already. And these Blue Devils have jumped out to a five run lead. There, right? You know, you've got <laughs> more chances. And are you a little discouraged? Or well, you've got to keep your heads up. You know that you've got good bats. You know that you've come behind from uh, four or five of your last five games to go on to win. You've just got to keep chipping away. You're not going to hit a five-run home run. You just need to get singles and doubles and maybe a home run here and there. But And these guys can do it. I mean, let's face it. They've done it today already. They were down four or five to, uh, or four runs, I think, to the water down hammer at one point. And, uh, you know, you got to keep believing it. Misses outside. I'll leave it at ten now with two balls and two strikes. Lyndon Grove. Fine day for ball. <laughs> and the Austin pitches swung on and missed. Scott Smith appears to still have some good stuff. A little left in the tank, it appears. That'll bring up the designated player, Chad Wells, who has since slid over to first base. He had a sack on in the third inning. And Smith starts him off with a rise ball that's out of the zone. One ball, no strikes. Time, Scott Smith working on the left side of the rubber. Very tip. And a swing and a miss. And leaving the count at one ball and one strike. It's been a fabulous week of basketball. Hats off to the ISC2 committee. Done a great job. Swing and a miss for strike two. Have no idea all the work and all the planning that goes into putting together an event like this. Soon as the committee returns back home, they'll be planning next year's event, I'm sure. Well, Lance, uh, one of the guys who's going to be heading up the host committee in 2010 was playing with Ashland Stockpack here this week to see how they did it. And this has been one of the most successful tournaments that we've had. And I think David Latch, I'm sure, was taking notes. Two two pitches fouled off. Chad Wells battling hard against Scott Smith. And Smith brings it. And that pitch is fouled off again. Good job by Wells to stay alive. Orson Smith to throw four pitches. The 2-2 pitch now is fouled off again. Good battle going on here between Chad Wells and Scott Smith. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. 5 nothing in favor of the Fort Elgin Blue Devils. Leading the pitch for Waterloo Cubs. Choked up on the bat as Wells, and that's foul tipped into the glove, and that battle is over as Wells goes down on strikes. Well, Lance, I was just about to say, this is the type of a bat that the Cubs need to make Scott Smith throw pitches and to kind of just wear him down, to continue to wear him down. But it looked like he just reached back and found an extra gear there, just blowing that one by Chad Wells. Sure did. The second strike out of the inning. Now to bring it back to the top of the shop and shortstop Dan Mitchell. He struck out and had an infield single and a high drop and swung on and missed. No balls and one strike as Mitchell goes for a bit of a stroll to regroup. Knows he may have chased the pitch out of the strike zone as he steps back in the box. The 0-1 pitch is chipped the third and out.
that'll be a foul ball. Quickly in the hole now, 0-2 is the shortstop, Dan Mitchell. He got cold. Played solid defense throughout the week. He got cold. Still a really good crowd on hand here. Waiting for a new Tournament of Champions champion to be crowned. And the rise ball swung on and struck the other side is Scott Smith. An impressive performance for this point. He looks like he's just getting a little bit stronger. I don't think he's throwing quite as hard as he was earlier in the day, but his stuff looks like he's got a little bit more movement than he did earlier in the day. Lance does his recap the scoring for everybody here. Uh, Fort Elgin Blue Devils are out in front of 5 nothing. Their bench is on fire over there. Lots of high fives, lots of chatter, lots of excitement. Ryan Mays leading off the second inning with a walk. Greg Tatey belted one to the fence. <coughs> yes, he did. And then coming around to score was Mays. Tatey trying to stretch that into a triple, thrown out at third, but the run came in. That stood until the top of the fifth inning when Matt Turcott started things off with a single. He was sacrificed to second, and then an RBI single for Daryl McKinnon. Ryan Dungeon RBI, or, uh, reaching base with a single. Aaron Whitney, an RBI single as he looped one in the right. And then a two RBI single by Mike Riley, and that accounts for the four runs in that inning and the five total for the Fort Elgin Blue Devils. Brad Thompson, on a relief of starter Brian Lathrop, he was lifted after the Riley single. All the runs that are in belong to Lathrop. Here's a two hopper out to short. Wow, what a gun. Dan Mitchell, really impressive with the throw. For that 6-3, and that'll bring up the designated player, Troy Barfoot. He's over 2 today. Go on. Two round up. Designated player, Troy Barfoot. And the first pitch is in there for a called strike as Brad Thompson is coming in to pick up the slack. Is grounded to short over to first, and yes, that Dan Mitchell certainly does have an arm. Or that one, 6 3 as well, and just like that, there are two away here in the top of the sixth inning. That'll bring up the catcher, Matt Turcott, who's been all over the diamond today. He's been all over the diamond, in fact, for three games. I guess four if you include this game. He's one for two. Grounded out in the second, singled in the fifth, and he scored a run. Facing Brad Thompson, and time is called. He's a little too long. Thompson is taking his time on the cat and mouse here. And now steps Turcotte. And this pitch is a chopper, gobbled up by third baseman, and thrown away. Turcotte does not advance, but I don't think that based on the speed of that chopper that they would have got Turcotte anyway. So we will give Turcotte a base hit on the top. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Brian Lance. He's had not a bad day. He had he tripled in the third and had a sacrifice in the fifth. That big inning in the fifth for these Blue Devils. Took a commanding lead. Changes, possibly a pinch runner. Is it a force to move up? Eight out, 18 in. Both teams? So Brian Lance will be pitching. No matter what. It'll be Matt Reinhardt. Number 
74, Ryan Whitney. He has to go back.
Just enough on that pitch to stay alive. Hello, with the uh, Jarvis Merchants, and for moving on and dropping down to the I-2 to play with these Cubs. Well, it's a script, right? You're, a lead, you're directing it. And Watch time is all called. Because we'll all have a copy of it. I'm sure it is. Scott Smith was taking too much time, or Gillow just decided that he wasn't comfortable enough in the box. Bill is truly a professional hitter. He does yeah. everything right. He takes his time. Three groups. Good work hands. Yeah. That's what I like about him. One two pitch now, and it's popped up to center field and settling under it is Aaron Whitney to record the first out of the sixth inning. Pitcher, twenty-four. That'll bring up the catcher, Beckler. Grant Beckler. Flied out both times. Flied out in the first and then flied out again in the third. Thompson rounding second and 
into third base, standing up. He's got a stand-up two-out triple here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 23, third baseman, Second consecutive hit for Thompson. Not only is he pitching, but he's hitting the ball as well. He's now two for three in tonight's championship game. Still a chance for Adam Hillier to drive in Thompson to break that zero on the scoreboard. So in steps Adam Hiller. And that ball is fouled off with a chance to tack on to that five-run lead. I'm sure based on the fact that they've already played three games, that five-run lead certainly seems like more. Sun is pretty well set here at the Campbell Complex in Rock Island. So, of course, Hiller not looking to tack on, but looking to actually get his team on the board, I stand correctly. Looking for a two-out hit here. Smith, of course, has other plans. And a prize ball continues to rise. Count on even now at two balls and two strikes. A fine week of fastball here, Rock Island, Illinois, Campbell Complex. And this ball is popped up to center field, suddenly under it is Whitney, and that'll do it for the Cubs in the sixth inning as they go down. Even a, a triple. So the man left on third base. He runs off one hit. So he will go down to the seventh point. And to say that the Kitchener Blue Cubs are running out of time is an understatement. The AA tournament is held each and every year on the third weekend in January at the Disney Wide World Sports Complex in Atlanta, Florida. Now in their 10th year, the AAU features teams from Canada, U.S., all across the Caribbean, as well as South and Central America. For a terrific basketball experience, make sure you contact Alex Lonares at the AAU Tournament website. That's aausports.org. Thank you to the AAU Tournament for their generous sponsorship. 2009 ISCT Tournament of Champions broadcast Give me the triple. Right here Give me that triple. Ballpark Radio. Lance Wynn alongside Joe Todd and Blair Setford. Thank you. We are glad to bring you game number 103, the Let's championship go. final of the 2009 ISC2 Tournament of Champions. An all-Ontario affair with the Kitchener Waterloo Cubs taking on the Fort Elgin Blue Devils. It's been all Blue Devils so far in this one. They lead 5 nothing to score and they will send the top of the shop up in Daryl McKinnon, Ryan Dungeon, and Aaron Whitney. McKinnon steps in, batting two for three. He singled in the first, rounded out in the third, singled and scored in the fifth. It was that big four-run fifth that done the damage. now pitch inside the ball. One ball and no strikes. Daryl McKinnon, the second baseman. Thompson's got here just to keep the bases clean. Doesn't want to add any more runs to that tally. So they have a shot in the bottom of the seventh inning. Pitch is in there for a called strike to even account of one ball and one strike. McKinnon Lays down the butt now, and it goes foul. Some of the Cubs sort of look around. Five-run lead in the seventh. They're not expecting a bunt. No, Adam Hillier was playing right at the bag, so I'm sure he was kept off guard by that move. Kind of question that. McKinnon actually holds the bat a bit different. He appears choked up initially, but before the pitch comes, he slides that hand down to the bottom. And that's it hard. Pass the third baseman into left field. 
for a base hit, a big wide turn for McKinnon. Give him his third hit of the day. And the big man is off for the Brian Dukin. That will bring up the shortstop, Ryan Dugan, or Dungeon. Or Dungeon. <laughs> Tag him, but they did get the throw. And they'll be taking Not the quite the sure game. there. So Bruce is going to the real place. Well, he stopped, you but he didn't back on the swing. Not out until he starts to back on the swing. That's the rule. You know, run it down to first. As long as you don't back on the swing, you're still in the field. The field is going to be here. Yeah, yeah. The Blue Devils looking for some insurance. Chad Wells doesn't exactly. Play first base on a regular basis. You know, almost lost his head there as he failed to tag. Dungeon kept running after hesitating, stopping, and going. But the throw was in time. And this one gets away. And over the third base was McKinnon. No potential, another RBI situation for Aaron Whitney here. He could add to his totals that he's accumulated. For Dan Menard asking about Scott Smith, the winning pitcher in both the previous TOC championships. He won the first when they beat Kempville. Swing and a miss there. But it was Nick Gates who was the winning pitcher in the Harrisburg win in 2004 over Tavis. However, Scott was named the most outstanding pitcher in that tournament. Two on pitch, this is down. Thank you, Dan, for the research. Just to push the count to three balls in one strike. Runner right on third. One away here, top of the seventh inning. And in tight, just too tight. Thompson might be able to trot down. Walk. Been on base twice. Two ground outs. Mike Miller is scoring. Mike Riley. Mike Riley. Right field. He struck it in the first. Slide out of the first. Single. Left strand on base. That big inning. Looking for some insurance here are the Blue Devils. And he takes a first pitch strike. No balls, one strike. Mike Riley. One away here, top of the seventh inning. Blue Devils with a five run lead. And that pitch is chopped back, foul, and then a play. McKinnon on first base. Whitney on, sorry, Whitney on first base. McKinnon's on third base. Another hit here could possibly seal the deal for the Blue Devils. Considerably, but it's still very comfortable. And a swing and a miss. Down goes Riley as he hustles to the dugout. Second out of the inning. That'll bring up Brian Hayes, the first baseman. Brian Hawks. And Brian walked in the second and actually scored the first run of the game. Since then, he's grounded out and fly out. That pitch by Thompson is in there for a called strike. No balls and one strike. Yo, one pitch. And that's fouled straight back and off the screen. So, in the hole now is Ryan Mays. No balls and two strikes. Long day in the diamond for both these two teams. Still playing hard. And this is 
gets away from the catcher, scooting home and in safely is McKinnon moving up on the play is Whitney and a big run. That'll push the lead to six nothing. And Lance, just the body language from the Cubs now, you can just see it in the way of their stance. Grant Becker in particular kind of slumped leaning against the fence as that run slid across the plate. I think they're just about done. I think you might be right, Kamish, and a swing and a miss as Mays goes down. That's it here in the seventh inning. Not before they get another insurance run, so one run off, one hit. One man left on base, and we go to the final inning here, the bottom of the seventh, last chance for the Cubs. They'll be setting up Travis Hofstetter. Ed Burkholder and Lyndon Strikeouts this week at this 2009 Tournament of Champions are brought to you by Cutro Professional Inspections. For pre-purchase home and commercial inspections for safety and code compliance in the Central New York area, please contact Mike Cutro of Cutro Professional Inspections at CutroInspections.com. Thank you, Mike Cutro of Cutro Professional Inspections, for your generous sponsorship of the 2009 TOC Broadcast Program here on Ballpark Radio. Of course, without our sponsors, we wouldn't be here and no one else would be. Big Theater, 25, Travis Hofstetter. If we get a chance here, I really like to thank the crew of the ballpark that the day was put together. The blue on this week's facilities uh, have been super. Uh, uh, the the three umpires on the stage <laughs> this are just a separation game. We've, we've hardly heard of them, and that's that's where an umpire gets noticed. The line shot out the shortstop over to first base for the first time of the inning. So again, a great job by Lou Davis and his crew. They've done a fine job all week. With one away now, that'll bring up the second base. Hey guys, there's uh, one other crew that I want to thank in particular, the heroes, the MVPs of this tournament are the grounds crew here at the Campbell Sports Complex, Todd Winter and his guys, Brad Muller, Jay Finn, Donald George, Austin Minson, Derek Beckert, Dustin Benor. Yeah. There's a high hopper that was off the glove huh? of Brian Mays at first. So a board with, uh, I guess, charitably called out an infield single, Lance. I would agree with you. Have to certainly have some hops to a board now. Yeah, we're cold a hit here in the championship. Just to complete the thought on that ground screw, we literally could not have finished this tournament without the absolutely stellar work by this group of individuals. In steps Lyndon Grubel. He takes a look at a call strike. Six nothing to score. One away now. Runner on first. Cubs clinging. Oh, you're as slim as the Pope's here. You want to take five times?
corners are now one away. We are in the bottom of the seventh inning. Charlie Walsman, safe travels back to Central New York. Congratulations on a good tournament. And a foul, they leave an account of one ball and one strike. Charlie talking about having them off. I hope not. One one pitch now is swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes to Chad Wells, first baseman. Sure, the Cubs would certainly, if anything, like to shatter that goose egg. Choked up on the bat as well. And blown by him to strike three. Scott Smith appears to have a plenty left in that tank. As he mows down Chad Wells. And the Cubs are down to their final out. And it'll be their leadoff man, Dan Mitchell. Mitchell struck on looking first, but an infield man, Pedro, struck on in the fifth. So being on the mound now, as I'm sure the anticipation is building. They're also very aware that this is the top of the order for the Cubs, too. And they don't want to break that. They want to save that shot up for Scott Smith. They all went out there for just a Let's, let's shut the door right here. Let's stop this thing. Dan Mitchell at the plate. Pitching released by Scott Smith. Strike one on the count. Mitchell now playing a solid shortstop. Has one heck of an arm. Shaking hands right now as we prepare for the opening ceremonies. We'll do the uh, line score. The Fort Elgin Blue Devils, six runs on five hits with five runners left on base. The KW Cubs, zero runs, six hits with seven runners left on base. So give full marks to, to Scott Smith for shutting down those high powered KW Cup bats. Scott Smith reporting us. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strikeouts. Had two, three walks in the game. But was able, whenever he did get in trouble, 
uh, was able to shut the door, obviously, by pitching that shutout. Absolutely. And any time you start a tournament with 40 teams, it's a week-long tournament. 40 of the best ISC2 teams in North America. And it comes down to the final two. We certainly have nothing to be ashamed of. If you make it to this 40-team tournament, you have nothing to be ashamed of. There is a lot of work, a lot of time. Sometimes it's a lot of luck to stay injury-free, to play well, and have your team play well. We'll the see you is going on, on the diamond. Is certainly, uh, I can't. No easy task. Canadians, you're gonna go to go and yeah. see some. I'll see you there. Okay, Joe. So I think all 40 teams should be commended. They did a great job. Even the photographers in the audience, the umpires, are certainly uh, fantastic. As well put together as some of them are. Well, you're going to have to excuse me, Lance. i got to go out and join Blair out of the field for the opening ceremonies. It's been good working with you this week. Uh, look forward to next year working in Midland, Michigan. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Had some great teams and a lot of good good week of ball. So thank you. Uh, I'll probably be escaping the ballpark radio for the Bells of the Night unless Mr. Center wants me back home. But thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of it all. Uh, this was a great week. I hope all will stay tuned for our Tournament of Champions next year in Midland, Michigan. If it's anything like this show, it'll be a great show again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, and we will remain on the air as we broadcast the closing ceremonies now and the hardware being taken out and presented. Of course, to the winning team, we will also be presenting the other award. The all-tournament team pitchers will be presented as well as the infield awards. A great job by Kyle Smith to help me out with my camera duties. Hats off there. So we have got lots still to get to. There's a designated player award, the most RBIs, the top batter, the top pitcher, of course, the Tournament of Champions MB MVP. And a couple of other surprise awards. See you there. And players and coaches to be presented with the hardware as the ISC2 brass are out there setting up the table, and trophies sure look awfully nice. We will follow along here as the presentations go through. Just want to congratulate those Fort Elgin Blue Devils. A fine tournament. To win four games in a day. They went four and zero today. To do that and come away with the win, riding the right arm of Scott Smith the entire way. It's quite impressive. Not quite sure why they didn't utilize all their pitchers, but in retrospect, it's not an issue right now as the Fort Elgin Blue Devils are champions of 2009. They get the honor of holding that title now for 364 days. Quite an honor. It also immediately puts a target on your back as being the defending champion. Something I'm sure they're willing to do. As the crowd still enjoying the IFC and the IFC too. We want to congratulate all the teams that played in the 2009 ISC the closing ceremony. Just in case you can't hear, the ISC to all the teams that played in the 2009 ISC to join. 
Great job, gentlemen. Uh, that is all right. of the that is the for Dodgers. Team batting average 438. The infielders, the alternate. And Derek team Martin of DA Power, batting average of 412. 476. John Daniel Doucette of the Those are the all 591 batting average. Jay Schnarr, Richport. Outstanding shortstop. He batted 389. Presenting the designated player second. award, Jim Johnson, one of our statisticians. TA Power, excuse me. The alternate designated player is Rick Martin of the Decatur Pride. Batting average 368. Those are your all tournament team infielders. The now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce Jody the individual. Booyah! Rustlers, he batted six for me. Aaron Whitney of Portland. On the field, I'd like to call him Gates and throw her Colin Smith. Todd Aldridge of Lloyd Minster, batting 438. And Eric Martin of EA Power, batting 412. So, congratulations, gentlemen. Colin Smith, we certainly will held in her own. The third place trophy, Luke Stevo of the Donna Connor.
competitive nature of the tournament of champions. Ryan Lakebrook. Good crowd still hanging around. See these guys receive their awards, considering the rain. Connor Page. I'd like to certainly tip my hat off to the guys in the committee and Brian Shepherd Yellow. Are keeping a level head and not panicking and doing and a great job of reshuffling Coach games the when Kishner, half the day was washed up. Runner up to the 2009 IFC came again. Tournament of Champions, a round of applause for the runner up Kishner Waterloo Cup. Fast and got all the games in, allowing the teams to determine who was going to win and not the elements. So we're winding down these ceremonies. The Cubs have received their plaques. Now it's my pleasure to call on IFC2 Commissioner Blair Setford to present the Gord Newman Memorial IFC2 Championship Trophy. Gord Newman was the tournament director of the very first IFC2 Championship Tournament in history back in 2002. Gord passed away in the spring of 2004, and we honor his memory every year with this presentation. Would Jim McKinnon and Greg Katie please come and accept the Gord Newman Memorial IFC2 Championship Trophy? On behalf of the 2009 IFC2 champions, the Fort Elgin Blue Devils, a round of applause. There you have it, the Fort Elgin Blue Devils, winners of the Gord Newman Trophy 2009. They are the 2009 ISC 2 Tournament of Champions. I would like to call on Hank DeWeil, Hank DeWeil Jr., and Jim Johnson, our statistician, to present the members of the Fort Elgin Blue Devils with their individual awards. Gentlemen, please come forward to receive your award as your name is called. So the Blue Devils. Daryl McKinnon. Handed their individual awards now. Ryan in Dungeon. retrospect, it's been a fabulous tournament. Anytime you can get 40 teams together, Aaron Whitney. South America. For some friendly but intense competition. Mike Riley. It's certainly a good thing and some great sportsmanship as the Blue Devils accept their awards and go over and congratulate Ryan Moss. Yeah. We thought Dave's getting awards, but apparently not. These two teams certainly familiar with each other as there are a couple of players Greg that Katie. were actually on the Cubs roster that were formerly of the Blue Devils and vice versa. Troy Bartlett. of the rainbow that took place on two days of this tournament. All the games were played. Ryan Lance. <laughs> that's certainly something that can be credited to the committee. Got two Smith. ball players as there were some late nights. He was getting on the diamond at 11 o'clock. Still playing. Matt Hamilton. Jeff, let's go. Do you have the keys? Josh. So it's certainly been a thrill Scott, for Christy. someone like myself to work with the likes of Blair Sanford and Kyle Smith, of course, Joe Todd. Rob All the game controllers, Mel Swift, Doug Bach, Colin Smith. Fabulous individuals. Steve Of course, Hank and Hank Jr. Blake Underwood. Jim and Maddie Flanagan. Outstanding individuals. Maddie, of course, does take the best pictures. Ryan Whitney. Jim Flanagan, a stand-up individual, period. Matt. Ryder. 
award this. Of course, would like to say hello to my family back in Milton, Ontario. My wife, Karen. Murray Moss. Son, Austin. Others, Kiara and Cameron. Haley and Dre. And Coach Jim McKinnon. There's lots of guys around looking for a little air time. Probably not going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have them. The 2009 IFC 2 Tournament of Champions. Champions. The Port Elgin Blue Devils. A good round of applause. There you have it. Port Elgin Blue Devils. Of the Blue Water League. That's up near the Wire to No One Sound area. And they've shown once again that they will be the team to beat come 2010. The 2010 TLC will be in Midland, Michigan. Of course, no easy task just to get to this tournament. You could possibly receive an invite. But at the same time, you have to qualify. Some now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce the toughest. individual award winners. Selecting the most RBIs during the 2009 IFC2 Tournament of Champions with 13 is Aaron Whitney of the Port Elgin Blue Devils. His presenting the award is Jeff Webster.
please remain for the photographs, but this concludes the awards and presentations for the 2009 IFC2 Tournament of Champions. Thank you for your attendance and thank you for your support. Congratulations once again to the Hornell Blue Devils, the new IFC2 champions. So there you have it as we wrap things up. Fantastic fastball played and a new champion crown in the Port Elgin Blue Devils.